I'm Sabina Alkire and I lead the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative at the University of Oxford. The work of our research centre, and we are a team coming from many different countries, is to try to look at poverty mainly in developing countries in a different way. Uh, that is, trying to really understand the different deprivations that batter a poor person at the same time. We know at this point in time how many people are income poor because that figure of people living under $1.25 a day has been calculated by the World Bank since 1990. And we would think that people who are income poor are also the people who are malnourished or the people who have bad water or bad sanitation. But now we have enough data in enough countries to be able to see that our assumption that income poverty was a good representative of other kinds of poverty is not accurate. We wanted to complement income poverty measure with measures that reflect different deprivations, trying to distill and summarize a set of important dimensions of poverty. We used three dimensions, health, education and living standards, and ten indicators. First, you're deprived in nutrition if any household member is malnourished, um, or if a child has died in your household. You're deprived if nobody in your household has five years of schooling. You're deprived if you don't have clean water and adequate sanitation, um, if you don't have electricity, if your floor is dirt, sand or natural, if you cook with fuel that's dirty so it gives smoke and hurts your eyes, and if you don't own more than one of a list of small assets like radio and mobile phone, television, bicycle, motorcycle, refrigerator. This methodology is born of common sense. If you talk to any poor person, they will tell you very clearly that they're poor because of income, but they'll also tell you they're poor because of health, education, nutrition, housing, you name it. The problem has been that academic enterprise has not been able to catch up with that. And the innovative thing about OFI is that Sabina Alkire and James Foster developed a methodology which is academically robust, but also practical that can be used by governments in eradicating poverty. So this is a 72-year-old woman, Puba, um, that we visited a four-hour walk up and down a mountain in Bhutan um, who is multidimensionally poor. And so we understand the deprivations she experiences, we sit with her, we watch her, and it helps us to see the insights and the oversights of our measure. Mexico became the first country to formally adopt an official multidimensional poverty measure as their national statistic. And from that point, we recognized that this could be useful in other countries. Bhutan released its first multidimensional poverty index in 2010. The government of Colombia released its index in 2011. And the government of Philippines has an official multidimensional poverty index. We have reduced our poverty index by 2,400,000 people in the last four years and by 1,300,000 for those in extreme poverty. In addition to helping us curb poverty levels, the Multidimensional Poverty Index has allowed us to better understand key variables related to poor populations and tackle them through a collective ministry and other government agency effort. One of the things that we're proudest of last year was the launch of the Multidimensional Poverty Peer Network here in the President's Garden of Magdalen College, Oxford. We brought together policymakers from 16 countries, including the President of Colombia and Professor Amartya Sen. All the participants pledged to work together to reduce poverty across all aspects of people's lives. I've had the pleasure of traveling to Colombia, Brazil, Vietnam, and I've actually talked to the people who benefit from this program. This is impacting poor people directly on their lives, directly in their poverty, and that's what gets us up in the morning, and that's what keeps us working on this. Mm -hmm.